get started. Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I have Michael Brayhoff. Brave, I'm going to get this right one day. Brave J Hawk Jensen. Go get it. Um, to go over week seven of the Survivor Pool and then go on to week eight and uh, and beyond. As usual, we're going to recap what happened last week in the various pools. So uh, the $10 million dream is over for me as far as Circa goes. Uh, in Circa, I was, uh, we had planned this uh, you know, for a couple of weeks. And we had, and Seattle was 65% owned and we saved Buffalo and Buffalo was 20% owned and they were the same favorite. And we took the three to one uh, leverage and we lost. <laughs> uh, so Buffalo lost and, and Seattle and all the chalk uh, in Circa went on. So it will be another year uh, of waiting for the 10 million for that. As far as the other pools go, we have one double pick pool uh, and one single pick pool. We took two different routes in both. Uh, one, we went for the, you know, the real, the super drop plays, but well, not even super drop plays, but we went with Washington um, in one and that lost basically every pivot lost this past week. Yeah. Um, but we did, we did play one Seattle in the, one of the single pick entries. And we did play one Seattle in the, uh, the double pick because if you recall, back in week seven, week five, when everybody played Detroit, Miami, and doubles, we faded them both. So we and we also faded San Francisco when everybody played them. So we have Detroit, Miami, and San Francisco facing no ownership of either team. All those three teams heading towards double picks. So we figured that we would we would just make sure to get the doubles um, with those. So for the, for that, we did t eat the Seattle chalk. And uh, we we have uh, we have uh, we figured we just drop the bombs a little bit later. So what we're going to do? Uh, by the way, I want to shout out to one guy. I mean, God God bless him. Okay. Um, mm. So in circa, there was one guy who had ten entries, ten left. God, I, I imagine he's played ten of the same every week. I'm not sure, but he went. Yeah, gotta assume he went not ten Seattle's. He went not ten Buffaloes. He went. 10 Buccaneers in Circa as a minus two point favorite when they could be used in several other weeks and uh, respect, I guess, but he's going to be uh, joining me on the registration line for next year as well. Uh, and th those went, oh, those went over for 10. Uh, hey. I, I have to say though, if I was still in, first of all, I would never be in with 10 entries this far because right. I would, I'm kidding, right? he, 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 he had to have played very aggressively by going all in multiple weeks, yeah. which is a strategy I would not do. If I had 10 entries left, I would have also lost them all. I just would have lost them a completely different route. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I, I'm pretty sure my top six or seven teams lost this week. Um, just, just, to remind, just to remind ourselves, I'm actually going to pull up week seven so you can see what, what, what we were going on. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah, I never, I never would have taken Buffalo this week, but I wouldn't have had them anyway. I would have gone all in and everything la uh, in week six. It's hard to say if I would have taken any. I probably would have laid off completely off of Seattle, and I, I, I never would have taken any Cleveland. There's no way. My favorite picks, like I said in last week's podcast, were Tampa Bay and Washington were my top two. Yeah. It was very hard after that after that to differentiate between the Rams, yep. the Raiders. I did not like the saints because I thought they were playable for later. I would have, I mean, I would have taken the Broncos before I would have taken some of these other teams, but obviously I would have taken the Packers before the Broncos since they played the, yeah. they played the Broncos. So yeah. I would have got absolutely decimated and uh, there's no way I would have survived this week, regardless how many yeah. entries I had. I, I would have lost them all. So let's do, all. so let's do, well, you know what? The good news is I'm still alive and stuff. I'll just let you know where I'm at. So yeah. one, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the, uh, the single pick pool, they're down, I think 577 from like 5,000 starting or something like that. And then in the, the double pick pools, they're down to only, I guess, 882, with again about like eight thousand people in there or something like that. It's freaking. It was it, it was a train wreck. And doubles are coming up soon. And and this 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 pool ain't make, ain't, ain't making it far. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, uh, well, and that so we're gonna talk about um, we're gonna talk about my two options. Well, my options. But before we do that, uh, I think it's a good idea 
for uh, Mike. He, he mentioned this to me. He's going to first start by going over teams that he wouldn't use regardless of, you ha- of who you have available. And that's an important distinction. Uh, well, it's an important uh, caveat because if any of you are still alive, I mean, I hate to put it this way, but you probably played bad. Um, I hate to say that. And, and I and honestly, and I'm alive in two entries in, uh, if you want to know the real truth, if I didn't have a partner, would never have these entries allowed. I, I never, I would never have been alive at this point. Cause the, you know, I, I, I think that if you're- I, I do want to, I do want to say that I've done what you, your Seattle pick in that one pool. I, I use that strategy one year. Oh, that, uh, that so, one I don't mind as much, but I mean like in Circa and all the other stuff. So I'm just saying, if you are alive at this point, uh, probably didn't play so great. Um, but also if you're alive, I really have no idea who you have available. So, so, so usually I would say, if you have this available, do this, if you have this available, do this, but I don't know how you can have these guys available. So about what, what, what Mike is suggesting is he's going to just start with saying who he's, who he shouldn't take regardless of available. And I'm pretty sure that by the time he's done, he's probably going to end up with the two teams I have to play this week because I put myself in a position where I have to do stuff like this. So why don't we just start? We haven't talked about this beforehand. So why don't we talk about uh, who you think is unplayable this week? And the reason I like starting here for this week is a very important thing to look at for this previous week. If you got through with Cleveland, which I never would have done, I, I think I would have had to t- drop. I think I would have taken the Broncos before I would have taken Cleveland. But if you got through with Cleveland, you have a very big advantage because you have Seattle left, and most people do not. Most people oh, wait, got wait. through this week. Excuse me, excuse me. I forgot to tell you who we took in the other pivot one since you mentioned Denver. Yeah, we we, we took Green Bay. <laughs> that's, that's oh yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> so so anyway so yeah so so go ahead keep going. <laughs> I so if you have Seattle left, that has to play into your strategy and you're more or less locked into it. It wasn't anything that you planned, but Seattle is now a very, very important team to have left. It's not the cream of, uh, of all the teams remaining, but in one of my pools, they are nine out of 181 entries have Seattle remaining. If you're one of those nine people, you have to use Seattle in week 10 you, you have no you just ha- you absolutely have no choice un- unless you save them for week 17 so i like to eliminate teams first and we're eliminating the teams that i'm assuming your pool is more or less going the distance there's one person in the discord that has 12 people left this does not apply to his entry or pools like that but this is for pools with 180 500 thousand 2000 people left let's start with the same teams that we've been talking about the whole entire season. If you're going the distance, you need to have Philadelphia for week 16. There's a, a, an even greater discrepancy between the top and like the third team. Now Philadelphia is a 16 point favorite in week 16, then Kansas city. So we'll tie Kansas city into that. Kansas city has a nice two or three week run for 15, 16, possibly 17. If you're going to win this pool and it's a pool that's going to more or less go, maybe not even the distance, but you have to play for week 16. You need to have Kansas City and Philadelphia available. And it's because there's not, there's a, there's no buffer between those top teams and like the three point favorites. The next picks are the three and four point favorites. You want to have a 16, 14-point favorite late in the season? You can't take those teams now. Uh, the other one is um, is Dallas. Dallas is not a team you need for le- deep into the season, but look at week 10. They're a two-touchdown favorite, but remember – When you look at these weeks, when you're doing your mapping, oh, there's a lot of choices. Will you have those other choices? Buffalo, probably not. More than half the people have used Buffalo. Baltimore, probably not. Going into this week, half the people have used Buffalo. Cincinnati, okay, everybody has them. Seattle. So that's where if you have Seattle, Seattle is an absolute must play for 10. But if if you don't have Seattle, 
you really want to have Dallas for week 10. The pool is going to week 10. So save Dallas for 10. So you don't have to drop seven, eight, nine, 10 points. Now you'd rather drop now and have a top tier team in week 10. And you can also save them for 11 or 12 as well. And the last one, San Francisco, you, you cannot, you, you just cannot take San Francisco. They have three very viable spots in 11, 14, and 15. I believe they are the top team in each of those three weeks. You can't take them this week. And, and when I say you can't take them, I, yes, I would rather take a one or two point favorite as opposed to taking these teams. The, the direct immediate EV will say that is not the, not the right move, but Seattle, for example, is going to be a very high EV play at the current spread in week 10. So some of these plays will be made up for the EV you're sacrificing now, and you might not even have to sacrifice will be made up for later. And, and in some cases you're going to take a higher EV team and then you'll be able to keep preserve these teams for later. So again, so, Kansas City, Dallas, Philadelphia, and San Francisco are absolute no plays. Oh, I'm so excited! So so far, so far, I'm safe. Okay. Okay. And the, and the, and there's a sec there's a second group, and I oh, no. and I've mentioned this uh, three uh -oh. times in a in a row. If you have Miami and Detroit of Miami and Detroit available, both of them, you can play one of them this week. If you don't have both of them, don't play the one that you have left. Just don't do it. There's, I, I, if you just look at the weeks that they're available, and remember they're available in similar weeks, there's just too many weeks that either of those teams are playable. And if you don't have either of them, your spreads are going to change. But these are also teams that in the pool that I'm looking at for pick availability purposes, they're about 40% available. These teams become much more valuable the longer that you hold on to them. So I would prefer not to take Miami or Detroit regardless, but if you only have one of them, do not take the one that you have left. So those are like the six teams that I would almost certainly not take. And yeah, I guess you could take Detroit or Miami, but at least have both of them. All right, let me start with my double pick pools. And I want to just show you yep. an example. The, the, here, here is why. I want to show you why we took Seattle last week, and I didn't worry about it. So there's five, 853 people. There are 21 people that have Miami available. <laughs> 21, and we're one of them. There are only 73 out of 10 million people who have Detroit available for doubles. And we have them available. I didn't do the math because I don't want to go through it. I don't know how many people have both these teams available, but I imagine not many. So, so, so that was our plan is to get to doubles. How, how many have Seattle left? Uh, Seattle. Now they have now only 80 because they used them all last week. Yeah. Right. Um, so um, that's why I didn't have a problem with that. So let's deal with, I guess the double pick pools first. So the two teams that there's two routes that we can go. Uh, and we're pre I'm pretty sure which one we're going to do, but, but there are two routes that we can go. Now, keep in mind what we have Root, week eight is singles. And then starting week nine, it's doubles throughout. Here are what, what are our choices are honest. So we have the chargers available. Okay. For, for now, for, for week eight. We also have Baltimore available now for week eight. Now, here's the thing. Um, that's this pool. I got to get to the other pool. So uh, well, this is the pool. Um, Baltimore is only, only 430 people have them available. The Chargers, everybody has available, and they're going to be stuffed through the roof. Okay, so the Chargers are going to be much more popular than Baltimore. All right, fair enough. So... The question is, is this, if we play uh, the Chargers now, what we then have the ability to do is play Baltimore in doubles in nine when both Cleveland and New Orleans are going to be jammed. And there's a drop all the way down to something like Pittsburgh if you don't want to do 
uh, Cleveland and New Orleans. So there's no choice but Cleveland and New Orleans to be to be jammed. So if we play the Chargers and eat the EV problem this week, because obviously they're going to be more yep. popular, what we get in return for that is the ability to play Baltimore in nine in doubles. Okay. Now, on the other hand, if we want, we and can. You, and you have Miami and Detroit available oh yeah. as well. Oh yeah. Correct? Oh yeah. And, and the other choice we have, we can play Baltimore now because they are pretty much, I mean, close enough to, to the same as, as, as the chargers at half the ownership. Okay. And take the leverage now. But if we do that, then we cannot play Baltimore in nine. And in that case, we're going to have to either eat Cleveland and New Orleans, which believe me, I don't want to do, or drop down to other stuff. And the other stuff would probably have to be Pittsburgh or Houston because there's no way I'm playing three in Kansas City. Okay. Um, so let, let me, let, let me jump in really quick. When, when, because you're two key, you're, you have three key teams here. If you get through, it's Baltimore, Miami, Detroit. Correct? I also have San Francisco, by the way. But okay, and San Francisco. Yeah. That's that's a good one. That's a great one. It, how far have you looked at? Because I'd personally be looking at who I would pick in Week Eleven. Because you have doubles in nine, ten, and eleven. Yeah. I would pick my Week Eleven picks and work backwards. Is that is that what you're doing? Well, what it is, we have. I want to. Well, I want to see. Well, we're we're gonna have our Detroit, Miami's like waiting to be waiting to be dropped on people, depending on how many people are left. You know what I mean? Depending on on what occurs this week. You know, like like if, if let's say that 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 we play. I don't know. Let's say we play the Chargers and everybody else plays Baltimore. Whatever Baltimore gets crushed, you know, and then we then we knock out people in nine. You know, then we'll probably drop Detroit, Miami on people earlier. You know what I mean? Um, where if people keep surviving, maybe we'll we'll push them back a little bit. The other thing about this is we have. Um, let me just pull this up. We Are, have you're a, you're a hundred percent taking San Francisco in eleven, right? In uh, doubles. Well, I mean, we could Detroit, Miami too. I mean, we could do whatever we want. I mean, this is probably San Francisco. You know, yeah, I guess either that or them in fifteen, right? If, if we if we think it's going to go to fifteen. I mean, we, yeah. have, we I, have. I haven't played pools like that, so I, I I know that if you get two big upsets, it's going to just demolish. Oh, the pool is absolutely demolish the, the pool is crushed, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, we have I, all. The, I, I I just have a feeling it doesn't even go that that ends before fifteen. Yeah, I, and I you, like, you you could be right, and and the other um, and the other uh, and we do have uh, what you call it um, uh, Dallas available for ten, okay. In doubles, which is a free score. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that that's just automatic. Yeah, it's automatic unless you wanted to have them for eleven or twelve. Right, right. Now we're gonna we're gonna. Well, now the thing is, we're gonna need a second. Well, we're gonna need we're gonna need it. We can a, a second team in ten. We we will have Cincinnati. We will do not actually. We faded Cincinnati. Okay, in that one, we're gonna have to come up with something. In you could play. You know, we play Dallas as as pick one, right? And then, you know, it's possible that, you know, maybe we say Baltimore in nine. Who knows? You know, and maybe use them as my pick ten, my pick two over there. We don't have Buffalo, unfortunately. We don't have Cincinnati. We don't have Seattle. So it's probably a drop to something like Vegas as our second pick. We're going to have to drop Dallas in 10. It's just too big of a favorite. Oh, so, yeah. I agree. So in 10, it's, it's got to either be like if we decide to like whip out in nine and do something else. Like, like it's possible in week nine. If, if the lines go where we want, maybe we drop to Pittsburgh anyway, save Baltimore again for 10, right? <laughs> and then they'll really be no owned. And then, and, you know, yeah. and then, then then we could play Dallas and Baltimore on people, you know? I um, I, I, I looked at 12. I, I mean, I just, I just grazed at this. But because of the availability that you mentioned for Miami and Detroit, if I were in your position – I would and we and we have, we have and we have Kansas City available too. I, oh, that's okay. That's that's good <laughs> to know. Okay, I, I I would use Miami and Detroit in twelve when they're going to be used in eight and eleven. They're unplayable in ten. That will allow for a short term, uh, uh, you know, a short slash medium term plan where a lot the team will be used up until then they'll be the least owned teams where minnesota and cincinnati are going to be slammed in 12 
Yep. They'll, they'll be very, they'll be the chalk picks for sure. Yep. And I would, and if you don't use Miami and Detroit in 12, I would actually use one of them this week because I don't think you need that. You, you definitely don't need them for 10 because they're not playable in 11. I think you have to, I mean, I would, I would take San Francisco in 11. I, I, I just wouldn't target a double pick pool for that many weeks to go to week 15. Right. If it does, yeah, then awesome. if it does, then I just got unlucky. Yeah. If I'm taking San Francisco in 11, I don't need Miami and Detroit, especially with you having Kansas City available. Well, but you, you remember, remember they're doubles. You, you sort of do. I know. Okay, okay. No, I, well, but if you don't use Kansas City this week, then you'll 100% have them available for 12. Which week, which, also, week you, which week are you talking about? Eight? I'm talking about in 11. If you okay, take San okay. Francisco, you don't need Miami and Detroit That's right. unless you were That's to take right. them both in 12. Which which I which which would be pretty freaking cool if we, <laughs> we did that. Um, not not to mention, God forbid, it goes to 15. You know what I mean? Like it's it's uh Yeah, it's, but but if it does, then that means if if you got to 15 and there weren't a few people left or it's over. Then you just got really unlucky that one of six different teams that you fully faded that was very heavily owned law didn't lose. Because in 12, if you take Detroit and Miami, the the the, the chalk picks are going to be Minnesota and Cincinnati at these spreads. And there's going to be several other uh, picks. There's going to be five or six picks in that run to 15 where there's going to be a six or seven point favorite that every that over half the field is on because it's doubles that you don't have. That'd be very unlucky for two of those six teams not to, uh, not, not to lose and for you to get there. If you don't get there, it doesn't matter anyway. That's but true. if you get there and none of those other teams lost, then that's, then that's just unlucky. So, so let's, let, let's go back then to the other, to the, to the seminal question, right? So, so is it better to use Baltimore now to get, if let's just, let's just say Miami didn't exist. Let, let's say, is it better to use Baltimore now over le- and to get leverage on the charges immediately or to save Baltimore to get leverage in week nine and doubles? Because you can't do both. That's the question. I would, I would never use Baltimore in nine because people are going to sort by what we're doing here, which you should do, sort by point spread. And – those that have them, they're going to start at the top. And if they take the biggest favorites, they're going to take Cleveland, New Orleans. If they yeah. some, if they don't have one of those teams, because a few people took Cleveland last week, they might take New Orleans, Baltimore. I would rather, at these spreads, I would rather take Houston or Indianapolis or Las Vegas. Well, if we, play, if, we, if we play Baltimore this week, that is who we're going to. Correct. So, I, well, I'm looking to step ahead. So if I know I'm not going to take Baltimore with these spreads, I'd rather just take Baltimore this week, and this is for doubles. Right. Or, oh, or it's, well, it's, well, it's singles. It's singles and eight. Yeah, no, but but it's doubles in right. nine and ten. Right. So right. I, I would never use them in ten because I would want them to be picked this week and next week or just pick them in week nine uh, and pick them in week eight myself or save them for ten. Interesting. Uh, ten would be – the least owner, uh, the least ownership left left available. Let's just say you get them at eighteen percent here. They'll be, they might be less than twenty percent owned combined with doubles in, in ten. Yeah. So I, I would never take Baltimore next week, and if you don't need them for ten, this is for doubles. I would use them at eight. If for for regular pools, if you have Seattle, I would one hundred percent take Baltimore this week. A hundred percent, and yeah, then use absolutely. Seattle in ten. Absolutely, there, 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 you don't you don't have any other choice. It, unfortunately, that's a good. Unfortunately, like I said, there's I can't have I don't have an entry that's a lot that's live with Seattle because oh no, I mean everyone would be dead. Everyone's dead last from the last week. <laughs> that's true, but the but those that have that right. got through with another team that I would never have taken. This is where you you take advantage of that, and again, everyone's picks strategy is different. Right. But the way that you capitalize on the, the, the current uh, pick availability is by playing Seattle in 10. And what you don't want to do is if you have to play Seattle in 10, if you don't play Baltimore now, when are you going to use them? I, I mean, at these spreads, I guess you're going to use them in 14. If it gets or there. Hope, if it gets or, there. Well, this, I'm speaking for single pick pools too. Right. You know, like it, if you're not going to use them, 
in 10 because you have Seattle, you, you really should just use Baltimore now. Otherwise, you're going to save them for the back end of the season. Well, what's cool and, is if you, if you play Baltimore now, by the way, that, then you get to play the Chargers in 14 if you feel like it. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, the Chargers are going to end up having two, you know, very chalky weeks. Uh, starting now. The other, the other one being 14. Yeah. All right. So here, so here, here's now we're going to use one of your tools here. So, so with respect to the the single pick pool, okay, what we're going to do since you said you know uh, you know we're going to eliminate teams that you don't want us to play. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort these by you know, win percentage, I guess. And, and I'm going to just X out the teams that I used already. Okay. Yeah. So show you what my, uh, what my, uh, my, my options are. Okay. Ready? All right. Yeah. Cause remember the idea is we don't want to play Miami Detroit, but let's just see what we can do. All right. So Baltimore used Buffalo used. Okay. Very good. At least we have someone down here. Let's find them. Mm -hmm. We got to do it right. Uh, Hey, New England used good for us that's a that's a that's a great one to have used yeah terrific then we have uh chargers used then detroit used then where are they rams used seattle used so this is this is our pool (laughs) this is so you I, I don't I really don't want to play Miami like 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 you said, but it's kind of rough business out there. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Um, and then again, this is I listen, we have no one to blame but ourselves, right? You put ourselves in this corner. That's 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 you know, these these are what these are what tickets are gonna look yeah, like. Yeah, and, and there's lot. all the teams I said you can't take Kansas City, Dallas, Philadelphia, San Francisco. <laughs> that's pretty funny, right? <laughs> Definitely can't take and, and those four. Wait, definitely can't take those four. Wait, definitely can't take those four. Probably here, and you definitely can't take those four. You like you said, and then if you only have Miami, Detroit, you definitely don't want to take Miami. So maybe I should just fold, <laughs> right? So 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 what we're gonna? I mean, we're probably just gonna, given this situation, probably just gonna have to eat it with Miami. I, I don't know it, unless unless somehow we were really feeling it. And take Houston or something like that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not taking those other four. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing Kansas City. Not doing Philly. Not doing Dallas. Not doing San Fran. Um, if anything, I'll just take the, the the hundred point favorite, you know, and just be and just and just figure. I don't, I don't yeah. want to. It's like this that survivor pool thing. You don't. You, you hate when people say this and figure out the rest later. But I don't know what else to do. So uh, that's, yeah, it's really unfortunate. Yeah, that, right. You know that. that you, you use the Chargers, and I have my rankings here. And I, you wonder why we is, use them? You want to use them because we didn't want to play them in chalk and eight. <laughs> and and luckily, I, I I don't have to backtrack on this one because I for one week I said Bay Chargers, and then I and then I and then after one week it's like well I don't want to take any of those other teams either. So I, I did say I'd, I'd probably you know slam all in the Chargers, even though I know the pick percentage is going to be high. My favorite pick this week is certainly Baltimore. If you have to have them, right. you know, it's pretty hard. I, I you know, about 40% of the people in the pool that I'm in have them. So people, they're very available. That's my favorite pick. If you have Seattle, then you have to take Baltimore and then use Seattle in 10. Yeah. My second favorite yeah. pick is, is Buffalo. I would never be in and have no. Buffalo left. No. <laughs> I, I, I personally would have went – what it went on two weeks ago when they played yeah. the Giants. Yeah. My my third favorite pick, now this will make some people happy, is the Chargers. I, I Because after that, I, I'm just dropping. And okay, I would right. rather drop than yeah. take any of the other teams. I, I have no problem. Sometimes you just have to eat it yeah. because if you don't eat it, you're going to end up really eating it later when right. you right. don't have any of these other teams left. Yeah. So. If I was in your spot, I would not. I, I would not take Miami personally. I, now, but my my mood might be different. I might be like, ah, I want to play for another week, right? And and, and it can't be that bad because I'm not saying it's bad. I would personally. I I personally. Oh, it's think oh, be it's, oh, it's bad. Oh, it's bad. But 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 I just don't know. Well, I mean, but, I mean, I if it's only, only five percent picked, I mean, it can't be that horrible. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's immediate EV versus future value, and they're very very strong. They're the highest EV play on the board. Okay, that is what it is. Yeah, I mean, if they, if they were eighteen percent picked, I would say you can't do it. 
but right. since yeah. they're only five percent, yeah. you know, picked, yeah. uh, you know, I, I'd say that you know, I, I would sleep. I would I would be able to sleep at night doing it. Yeah, so. I, you know, I, I think eating the Chargers is fine this week. It's a it's certainly better than taking Man. at least those four other teams and, and, and then, you know, six teams, if you throw in Miami, Detroit. And then after that, you know, it's just time to roll the dice and the three roll the dice teams this week. There's only three of them. It, it's Houston, Atlanta, and the Jets. Th those are the roll the dice uh, teams. And again, you're not doing this because you're giving up. You're not doing this because you, you think one of them, it, you know, it's mispriced or they're going to win because of who they're playing or because they're playing for something. You're picking them because you want to preserve the equity of the other teams that you're not picking. You want to be able to take Dallas in 10. You want to be able to take the Eagles in 16. You want to be able to take San Francisco in 11, 14, or 15, where they're the highest current spread team for that week. You want to save uh, Kansas City for 13, 15, or 16, where they're the highest spread for those weeks. Because unless your pool has a couple dozen people left or less, then if you're in that case, then you you got to look at who everybody has and it's harder to figure out. Your pool is going to week 16. So take the chances now. And then when you get there, I'm going to tell you, it feels really good being able to drop those teams. Yeah, absolutely. And la last year, the big one for us, we, we took Buffalo Dallas and we weren't the only one to do it. Uh, uh, two or three others uh, got there as well. I looked it up earlier this week. It felt great playing those 11 and 15 point favorites. Of course, yeah. Dallas should have lost the game, but it wasn't fun watching the game, but it was fun having, seeing, I think everyone had, a lot of people took Seattle that week. They were like, I don't know, 30, 40% pick. And they were a six point favorite. And some people took, I think, Tennessee. Well, we had Dallas at a 15 point favorite and that, that felt pretty good. So whatever distaste you'll have for, you know, maybe taking one of these teams and, you know, being, Houston, Atlanta, the Jets, or just eating up the chalk with the Chargers. It's going to, it's going to, you're going to get that taste back in these, in these latter weeks when you have the cream of the crop left and other people don't. And my, my the note that I have here is that we already talked about if you have Seattle, how start planning your season, you're mapping around them. But look at the other teams. Uh, I have the pick percentage up for the pool. S single pick pool because this is where it starts to really matter you know looking up what everybody has left and seeing who's important and, and the problem is this week is the teams that have been used the absolute most yeah. outside of Seattle are the teams that are the highest favorite teams this week and because they're all at home Kansas right. City Dallas Detroit Philadelphia Baltimore San Francisco Miami Buffalo those are the teams that the, the least amount of people own. The only other one not included in that list is Seattle. So if you take one of those teams, you're sacrificing something later. I, I'm not saying you can't take one of them because if you have if you have Philadelphia and San Francisco, you could you could easily take San, uh, Kansas City this week. It's about who you have remaining that's going to dictate who you can pick. Now, if I was still in, remember, I went all in with Kansas City one week and all in with San Francisco. And then I would have went all in with Buffalo. They, were, they, they also have to be the biggest favorites that week. I, I just thought those, those were the best picks that week. So I'm saying this as if what I would have, and I know I wouldn't have those three teams. So if I don't have those three teams left, that means I, can't, I couldn't take Philadelphia. And I assume a lot of people have taken at least two of those teams. So either take the chance now or take it later. Yeah. Uh, because at some point you're going to be forced into it. Who do you uh, who do you like in the World Series? Uh, I you know I I, I didn't <laughs> I didn't even know what the series were at until a couple of days ago. I'm like, oh wow, Game Seven tonight, and then tomorrow's a Game Seven. So what is it, Philadelphia? I could yeah, I, 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 you know, I tell you something. Maybe I'm like a psycho like this, but there's nothing more. I, there's very few things I love more than watching a team win and celebrate on the opponent's home field. I love it. I just love it. <laughs> when, uh, when, see, Arizona took a game seven with all those Philadelphia psychos out there. Just like, just, oh, that's your Arizona one. Yeah. So, yeah. So see Arizona, Arizona went on the road like the that. I love it. I just love it. <laughs> so I, I haven't watched baseball. I, I, that, that was my favorite sport through my second year of college. I, I love baseball, yeah. but it's, it was too, too time consuming. So I got yeah. off of it and switched to NFL. I'm going to, I want the team. I, I would, 
I want the Rangers to win because they've never won the World Series. Nice. Uh, and yeah. when, when I when I moved to Kansas City uh, 13 years ago, the, the Royals were terrible. And then we had that amazing two year stretch. We went to the World Series back to back years. And I went I went to Game One the year that we won. I went to Game Seven the year that we lost. Wow. And that game seven was still the coolest sporting event I've ever been to, because if we had won, I would have been there rooting for the home team right. with, with my friends and, and my wife. And that would have been really awesome. So yeah. I hope the team that wins is at home. Okay. That's, that, that's, that's more exciting, but okay, uh, God, I, I couldn't name one player on the Ranger. Oh no. Sager's on. Is, is Corey Seager. Sager on there? Seager. 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 I know well, you used to be on the Dodgers. Well, with Dodgers me, with me, it's worse. It's worse because, like, I do DFS and DFS. With yeah. that, if that totally poisons you. I know all the players, but I have no idea what teams are good. Uh, just none. <laughs> like, if you ask me, like, even at the end of the season, who was in the playoffs? I'm like, the Twins. They're in the playoffs. I, they they faded them in DFS every freaking night. They're terrible. How? Because yeah. there's a difference between like being good actual teams and good fantasy teams. So, so uh, that, that that's what that's that's what DFS does. DFS totally poisons you as far as sports goes. Um, all right. We talk, well, you know, kind of backtrack my last note. We talk about if we were still in Circa. Yeah. Who you pick this week? Yeah. Because I think it's, it, I think it's very interesting. Well, I, because, so if Buffalo, so if Buffalo, if Buffalo won, we were, um, we were going to, I think, play the, well, we were going to be between the Chargers. What's well, so funny how I totally forgot it. We were thinking of dropping to somebody like Tennessee at the at the time, mm-hmm. um, but I think it was going to eat the Chargers. I think I think that's what we're going to end up doing because we didn't have Baltimore available in certain. This is one of those weeks where, if you still where I would want to really decide right now who I want to take on Thanksgiving, and if the name of the team is not Detroit. I would take Detroit this week because yeah, we we already used them. Yeah, we already used okay. And the and the reason for that, what I've seen playing circa the last few years, and I followed it, the pick percent distribution after being eliminated the two years we got knocked out week one because it's important to know what which way people are leaning with the teams that are big favorites on Thanksgiving because you can get a really low ownership. Yeah, like Detroit says nineteen percent here. Well, we had we had, we had they, we they, had, they might be five percent pick this week. Yeah, we had San Insert. Fran. We we faded San Fran when everybody played them, so we had them available for Thanksgiving, which would have been pretty cool. Um, but um, yeah, well, you know what? I definitely, I de- I definitely like taking Detroit in the circuit this week, and that, that's assuming obviously you're gonna you, you still have Dallas, you know, right. for there or. Right. or or my Miami or what's it, San Francisco, the other team. It's incredible. It's the same teams over and over and over. I, yeah. I'm I'm definitely going to follow Circa the back half of the season because it's going to get very interesting. It's going to get very thin with – even if you try really hard to save these teams, if you didn't take some insane chances by taking a bunch of these three-point favorites, then you're going to run out of these teams and you're going to be forced onto them. And the thing is, this past week, Every single drop team lost. Every single yeah, one of them. I ran. I, we ran really bad with the with the gambles. You know, you're supposed to win a couple. You know what I mean? Like, you so, you are. But yeah. what's great is since they've all lost, I I, I assume the entries look very similar to one yeah. another. The yes. ones that have that advance, and it's going to make it really exciting because what we should see is we should see some pretty insane picks on Christmas. Someone, you know, people are going to be saving for that. You know, you know, taking taking an no, you can't take a ten point underdog, but. You know, uh, you, the, the, but you took you took like a six point underdog right with Washington that year, didn't you? Yeah, there it was. I think it. Had, yeah, it was. It was six or five or something like that. Yeah, you know, it might have even been lower. Yeah, you know, something something like that. But it, we're going to see a lot of spots where you're. We're going to see. I call it gutless picking. This is the last comment. We can finish. Survivor pool is not like a poker tournament. In a poker tournament, when you get to the final table. There's ladders for money, ninth, eighth, seventh, sixth. Places are all pay different amounts of money. My absolute favorite stage of Survivor Pool is when there's that that big week where a lot of people get knocked out, and then everyone all of a sudden, everyone feels like, oh my gosh, I'm close. Right, right. But you're not close. There's still no. 18 people left, and you're playing down to one. And what? But what happens is. There's this illusion of that's when they really close. tighten up. That's when they really they tighten, tighten up and they clam up and they take. You're, we're going to see these latter weeks where everyone's going to take 
the chalky Minnesota, Cincinnati, six, seven, eight point favorite. And there's going to be amazing opportunities to drop off of those to the, you know, the two, three, four point favorites and have amazing uh, discrepancy in, in pick percentage. And you can identify these weeks well in advance. Like right now, it's very apparent there's that one week way out there where Cincinnati and Minnesota, like, I don't know, what, 14 or 16 or something, if the spreads hold, they're going to be insane shock. And if you can, you know, that's a week where you'd really like to, you know, save a, a Kansas City, Philadelphia, San Francisco, whichever week it is. I mean, to show you, to show if, you, like, if you can, to show, to show you what a strong pick thing looks like. So one of the things that Office Pool does is they rate your, they rate the uh, the remaining entries by strength. Um, and in that double pick pool, where we're we're actually rated like six out of like seven hundred teams as far as strength goes. To show you what like a really like like this one is, this isn't ours. This is the one that's ranked number one. And you see what this guy got away with. He got away with playing Jets in doubles back in five um, when they beat Denver. And he played Denver this past week against Green Bay. And that's, and yeah. he, and he doesn't have Detroit available, but he does have Miami and San Francisco and Kansas City and all the other stuff. So, so, you know, listen, props. I mean, he played the Washington week one, right? Which was the future value pick. The Giants week two, which is the future value pick. Philly week three. Um, I think that was the only thing that got through, I guess. Um, Minnesota, and then, but but wow. you, but burning jet jets is strong, man. And you get away with it, you're a freaking you're a hero. And same thing with getting through with Denver because those those two teams are dead, you know, for the rest of the season. So, um, but those are the listen those those are the tough ones we're up against. But they're you know they're uh, um, it, it, and I, I like those picks. I, I it would have been it would have taken a lot of entries for me to drop to a plus one Denver this week. But again. Right. It was probably like my seventh favorite play with the six being Green Bay or something, but the, the team they played against. It feels a lot better to do it though early because you don't know how much you're losing. You know, sure. if you do that with 10 people left, it's a lot harder to pull the trigger. So if there's a standout team at the end of the season that you can hold on to, where the only way you won't pick them is if they're sitting players or someone gets injured, that's that is the best strategy, the safest strategy, because you know what you're getting if uh, if you get there, and it's probably going to hold. I mean, San Francisco, Philadelphia, Kansas City, they're going to be trying to win in week 15, 16, and most likely 17. So yeah. if you can save those teams and, and have a 10 point higher favorite than than most or all of everybody else, unless they have that team too, because there are some big drop offs, and there's only one team at the top, or one or two teams at the top, and they're all the same exact group of five teams we've been talking about the whole season all right man uh i'm good for next week and uh have a great weekend i'll see you next week bye-bye later